Hi, my name is Ramo Osman, and for my D206 data cleaning project, I chose a research question which examines the relationship between medical complication risk and various health determinants. So my required dependent variable needed to answer the research question is patient complication risk. And my independent variables are age, gender, the number of children, the risk for high blood pressure, obesity, anxiety, allergic rhinitis, and reflux esophagitis. So the programming language R was used to clean and analyze my data set and to answer the research question. Um, R Studio was chosen um, because it is efficient and it has many packages that are suited for reading and cleaning data. So for example, we have a package called the Reader, which um, reads rectangular text data. And there's a package called ggplot2, which um, creates elegant data visualizations. Uh, furthermore, uh, principal component analysis, which was performed as part of the data analysis step, it requires um, less steps in R Studio than in other than in any other programming language. So that was another reason why R Studio was chosen. Um, okay, so to get started, I'm gonna. I've already installed the packages that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to add these packages to my library. Um, these are some of the packages Tidy R, Reader, ggplot2, and um, so on and so forth. So I'm going to add these packages to my library. And then I'm going to name and import my raw data file using this function right here called medical, I named it medical raw data. And then I'm going to read CSV and then my, the, the CSV file of my medical raw data. So I'm going to run that function. And then I'm going to run the view function, which uh, just, it's going to show me my medical raw data file. And uh, this is my raw data that I'm going to be working with. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to explore the data set by looking at the number of rows, columns, data types, etc. And the function to do that is this uh, structure function. It's called structure medical raw data. I'm going to run that. And that function basically shows me um, the list of like the list of my columns. So there's a column called case order. It's a numeric column. Um, there's a column called I don't know uh, income. It's also a num it's a numeric data type. And uh, there's a column called gender. It's a character data type. And um, Okay, and then um, next I'm going to delete any columns that are not relevant to the data set. So any columns that are redundant or just not important for analyzing my data. And the function to do that is this function called medical, uh, medical raw data. And then these are the columns that I'm going to be keeping in my data set. Column 1, 12 through 13, and then 16 through 42. So I'm going to go ahead and run that function. And if I open my medical data set file, it should have all of the columns that are only the columns that I'm that I uh, need for the data analysis. Okay. And then um, when exploring the data set, there were some NA values spread across multiple columns. Um, these NA values were first detected using the function, a function called, I'm going to type it out here, a function called call sums. 
from um, is dot na, which basically just shows me any any values. And then medical, which is my data set file. And when I hit enter on that, it shows me all of the columns in my data set that have NA values. Uh, so for example, my children column has 2,588 NA values. Age has NA values, income, uh, soft drink, overweight, and anxiety all have uh, NA values within them. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to impute these NA values using the median and the mode. Um, So NA values in the children, age, income, overweight, anxiety, and soft drink. Um, sorry, not including soft drink. So children, age, income, overweight, anxiety columns were imputed using the median, while NA values in the soft drink column uh, was imputed using the mode and um, the soft drink column was a categorical column so that's the reason why we used the mode to impute the na values in that column so i'm going to go ahead and run all of these functions together And um, any um, categorical columns were factored, um, converting the different categories to numeric by using this function right here. So uh, this code shows that a function called factor function was created to change categorical columns to numeric. And then this function is applied to all numerical columns um, in the next uh, in this next function right here. So I applied it to all of these numeric columns. I'm gonna go ahead and run this and then run the second function. And then this third function just updates um, um, updates these factored columns. It replaces the categorical columns with the factored columns. Run that function. So we changed categorical uh, values to numeric because the box plot uh, analysis that we're going to be working with, um, it works best with numeric values. So that's the reason why we uh, changed the categorical values to numeric. And um, box plots are a measure of how well distributed the data in a data set is. Um, and box plots were deployed to detect outliers in the data set and were created in R using this function right here. So I'm going to run that function. Um, so we see that there are outliers for columns, um, children, let me just open this up. There are, col there are outliers for columns, children, vitamin D levels, vitamin D supplements, full meals eaten, and also for um, population and income.
So um, the decision was made to keep all outliers in the data set as um, removing them would remove approximately 90% of the data. And although our box plot handled and presented a summary of the large data set, the exact values were not preserved. Um, because the box plot shows only a summary of the distribution of results. Um, for this reason, it is recommended to combine box plots with histograms for a more thorough analysis of the data. So our data set is now ready for, it's all cleaned up, it's now ready for analysis. And um, the analysis that we did was a principal component analysis which is used to classify the data set into smaller groups. Uh, principal component analysis is a dimensionality reduction method that is often used to reduce the number of input variables in a data set by changing a large set of variables into a smaller one that still contains most of the information um, in the large set. Um, so for the PCA, the dependent variable complication risk and the independent variables age, gender, children, and high, high blood pressure, obesity, anxiety, allergic rhinitis, and reflux esophagitis were looked at to perform the PCA. So this is the function to perform the PCA. Uh, I called it medical.pca. I'm going to go ahead and run that function. But before I do that, uh, so in this function right here, um, medical is our data set. And then this true statement centers our variables relative to the data set. Um, and then the second true statement standardizes the input data so that there is zero mean and variance in the data. So I'm going to go ahead and run this function. And then I'm going to collect a summary of, of whatever I just ran. So this is the result of our PCA analysis down here. So the results of the PCA um, shows that 98% of our of the variation in the data set is explained by PC1. And then we're going to also look at lo uh, we're going to also look at PCA loadings and the function to look at that is uh, it's called medical.pca rotation. So uh, I mean, looking at the PCA loadings, um, the variable children right here has a coefficient of 0.99 for PC2, while the variable age, right, sorry, the variable children right here has a coefficient of 0.99 for PC2, and then the variable age has a coefficient of 0.99 for PC1. Um, the other variables contributed very little to either principal component. And then um, we also did a scree plot. Um, and this is, the, uh, this is the function for a scree plot right here. I'm going to go ahead and run that. So a scree plot and the resulting eigenvalues were then utilized to further analyze the result of the PCA test that we did up here. So the plot shows that most of the variation in the data set is explained by principal component one as well. Um, so this means that the variables that fall into the first principal components can be used in further analysis by an organization. 
and um, I believe that's the end of my presentation.